How Maps Are Made. This lecture is about how printed maps were made from the 15th through the 19th century. It is an overview about the general trends in map making. The primary source for much of this lecture is David Woodward's excellent reference, Five Centuries of Map Printing. The first surviving printed map was by Isidore of Seville in 1472. This was shortly after the invention of movable type at mid-century. Printed maps appeared in increasing numbers by the late 1470s, in particular in editions of Ptolemy's Geography from 1477 on. Up to the second half of the 19th century, almost all maps were made by non-mechanical processes. All printed maps were printed from a matrix. A matrix is an object upon which a design has been formed and which is then used to make an impression on a piece of paper, thus creating a printed image. A matrix can be made from wood, called a block, metal, called a plate, or from a lithographic stone. For the maps we will be considering, all the matrices were made non-mechanically, that is, by hand. While there were some photographically made maps in this period, I will not be discussing these in this lecture. So, how were printed maps produced? There were three basic processes used. The first type of map are those made by a relief process. In a relief map, the image is printed from the raised surface on the matrix, so the printmaker creates the matrix by cutting away that part which he does not want to show in the image. The ink is applied to the raised surface of the matrix, which is then pressed onto a sheet of paper. Examples of relief prints are woodcuts and wood engravings. The second type of map are those made by an intaglio process. In an intaglio print, the image is printed from a recessed design in the matrix, so that the printmaker creates the matrix by cutting into it the design he wishes to imprint in the paper. The ink is pressed into the design cut in the matrix, the surface is wiped, and the ink is then transferred to the paper under pressure. Examples of intaglio prints include engravings, etchings, aquatints, and mezzotints. The last basic type of map are those made by a planographic process. In a planographic print, the image is printed from a matrix with a flat surface, where the image was created on the surface by the use of a greasy crayon or ink. To create a planographic print, water, which is repulsed by the greasy image, is washed onto the surface and then ink, which is held by the greasy image, is applied to the matrix. A press is then used to transfer the image to the paper. Lithographs are planographic prints. So, let's look at specific map making processes. The first process we'll look at is that of making a relief woodcut map. In a woodcut, the image is cut into a wood plank parallel to the grain. The image is more carved than engraved using a knife, graver, or similar tool. The block is inked with a thick ink. Then the paper is dampened and placed on the press with the block. A screw press is used to press the block and paper together, thus transferring the ink to the paper. So what are the characteristics of woodcut maps? First, they have black lines on white paper. They are also somewhat stiff and clunky because of the difficulties of working with the wood. And finally, the lines sometimes are slightly recessed on the paper because of the pressure from the press. Most of the earliest maps were made by this process. Woodcut prints were first made in Asia as early as the 9th century, with the earliest known European woodcut from 1418. The first woodcut map came about a half century later, Isidore of Seville's map from 1472. 
Since woodcuts were printed on the same presses used for text, they tended to appear in printed books, with their use being spread with that of the books. Woodcut maps were produced mostly north of the Alps, in the Rhine Valley, Bavaria, and Swabia, and they flourished from about the 15th until the middle of the 16th century. After that time, they began to fade from use, though some did occasionally appear in the following centuries. Woodcut maps had a number of advantages. They were printed from the same press as books, and they could even be printed at the same time on the same page as typeface. And of course, the material was quite inexpensive. On the other hand, there were some serious disadvantages to woodcut maps. First, it was difficult to cut the map designs into the wood. The coarseness and stiffness of wood made it hard to follow a drawing closely and to provide fine detail. It was also very difficult to achieve any sort of shading or tone, giving most woodcut maps a rather stark appearance. There were also a number of mechanical difficulties with the process. The ink tended to build up on the block. There was a limit to how large a block could be used. And then the blocks themselves had issues with breakage, warping, and wormholes. The process was also unforgiving. It was very difficult to either modify the map once carved or to make a repair if a mistake was made. In these cases, assuming one didn't just throw out the old block and create a whole new one, one could cut out a section of the block and replace it with a whole new section. Or sometimes a paper overlay with the corrected information could be pasted on top of the original map. Finally, text was very difficult to incorporate into the images. The complexities of the letter shapes were difficult to work in the wood, and most text on maps was quite small. Again, something difficult to achieve carving into a wood plank. The next map making process we will look at is another relief process, that of wood engraving. This is essentially the same process as making a woodcut, where you create a relief image on a block of wood by cutting away the parts that are not going to hold ink. However, with a wood engraving, the image is cut on the end of the grain using a graver or a burin. The process of wood engraving was developed in England early in the 18th century. However, it wasn't firmly established until the work of Thomas Bewick at the end of that century. Wood engraved maps were popularized by their use in the illustrated newspapers of the mid 19th century. This is because they could be printed at the same time on the same presses as the text, they were quick and inexpensive to produce, and with electrotyping, the maps could be run off in the thousands. Overall, however, relatively few maps were made using wood engravings. Most of those that were made with wood engraving were those that appeared in the illustrated newspapers, though some encyclopedias and textbooks also used them. However, by the late 19th century, other processes were developed which better filled the niche that wood engraved maps had been used for. These new processes included some photomechanical processes and also wax engraving. That is the last of the relief processes used to make maps that we will look at. To create a wax engraving, first a metal plate is heated and coated with a thin layer of a wax composition. The image is then transferred to the wax and then the engraver works on the wax surface to cut out the design using burns, needles, and other tools, as well as sometimes typeface. Once the image is cut into the wax, the raised surface is built up to a higher level and then the surface is electrotyped with a thin copper shell over the wax. The copper shell is then removed from the wax and the back is filled with about a quarter inch of molten metal, creating the final printing matrix. This matrix could then be used on a regular relief press. Wax engraving was developed in 1839 along with electrotyping. The first use of it was perhaps Samuel E. Morse for his 1839 map of Connecticut in the New York Observer. 
Morse then later used the process for his serigraphic atlas of 1842. Initially, wax engraving was used mostly for books, such as atlases and school geographies. From the 1870s on, it became the primary American commercial map process. It was used by most American commercial map makers, such as the Chicago firms of Rand McNally, George F. Cram, C.S. Hammond, and the Buffalo, New York firms of Jewett and Chandler and Matthews Northrop and Company. It was particularly extensively used for railroad maps. In Europe, wax engraving was used for illustrations, but not so much for maps. This is the last of the relief processes that we will consider. Now we will turn to intaglio. Engraving, or light engraving, is an intaglio process where the printed image is cut into a metal plate. You start with a metal plate, usually copper, where the surface is polished until smooth. The image is then transferred to the plate, often upon a white wax covering which has been put onto the plate. The image is then engraved into the surface of the plate, mostly using a burin, but also other tools. The plate is heated, the ink is dabbed into the incised lines, and then the surface of the plate is cleaned off. Dampened paper is then placed on the plate, and then the paper and plate are pressed together on a rolling press, which squeezes the paper into the lines on the plate so the ink is transferred. So, what are the characteristics of an engraving? The most noticeable is a plate mark, which is a slight ridge in the paper surrounding the image. This comes about because the squeezing of the plate and the paper together under pressure stamps the outline of the plate onto the paper. Another characteristic is a fairly supple or graceful design, often with considerable detail. This is because the softness of copper allowed the engraver to work a flexible line. Engravings also often have a slightly raised line, as the ink lies on the surface of the paper. The lettering for engravings is quite different than for a woodcut or wood engraving, for in an engraving, the letters are usually engraved by hand, though sometimes stamped letters or symbols were used. Because engravings use a different press than typeface, where extensive text was needed either on the back of the map or along with the map itself, usually a separate run was done on a separate press for the text. The first copper engraved maps were from the 1477 Bologna Geographia. Other engraved maps soon followed, including in the Rome 1478 and Florence 1482 Geographias. For the first 100 years or so, almost all engraved maps were from south of the Alps. It took a little while, but soon the use of engraving for maps became more common than the use of woodcuts. There was some reluctance at first to adapt this process because of the special equipment and presses used and the need for separate print runs for the maps and the text. But by the middle of the 16th century, most printed maps were made using engraving. Engraving remained the dominant map making process for about 300 years, finally losing its dominance in the middle of the 19th century when it was replaced by lithography. So what are the advantages of engraved maps? Well, first, it was relatively easy to work the copper, the material allowing the engraving of curves and lettering and so forth. It was also possible to get very fine detail. And it was possible to engrave areas of toning by the use of hatchering, stipple, and so forth. Finally, it was relatively easy to make revisions. All you needed to do was beat out the surface to smooth it out, polish it, and then re-engrave. There were, of course, also disadvantages to using engraving for maps. One of the main ones was the need to use a different press than that used for books with typeface. Then it was fairly time consuming to engrave a plate. It's been estimated it took about one day to engrave one square inch for an elaborate map. So it could take about two months or so to engrave a folio map. It was also quite expensive to produce an engraved map 
Copper itself was quite expensive, and you needed highly skilled craftsmen to engrave the plate. Finally, plates could wear out because of the soft metal and the high pressure used. So there was a limited number of impressions which could be run off. Now this could be somewhat compensated for by recutting lines in an old plate, but this added to the cost and the reworked plate was often not that good looking. After about 1840 though, printers used electrotyping to prolong the use of a plate. Line engraving was the main intaglio process used for map making. Etching was sometimes used, but it tended to create a fairly light line, so it was primarily used for cartouches or illustrations. Tonal processes such as aquatint and mezzotint were not used much at all to make maps, nor was steel engraving. So now we'll turn to the last type of map making process, the planographic process of lithography. Lithography is a planographic process using a stone as a matrix. The name means stone writing. The process uses a chemical rather than physical separation of the printing and non-printing surface of the matrix. The most common type of stone used was limestone from Solenhofen in Bavaria, though beginning in the early 19th century, printers started using zinc plates. With lithography, the image was drawn onto a polished stone with a special ink called touche. This ink is waxy or greasy, which causes it to attract printing ink. After this, the stone is etched with a weak solution of nitric acid to accentuate the contrast between the inked and the non-inked parts of the stone surface. The stone is then washed with gum water, which is repelled by the ink image, but absorbed by the bare stone. After all this, a greasy printing ink is rolled onto the stone, the ink held by the drawn image and rejected by the moist stone. Finally, the inked image is printed onto the paper using a lithographic press. So, what are the characteristics of lithographs? There is a certain flatness to the impressions of lithographs, and the images tend not to be quite as sharp or precise as with line engravings. On a more positive note, the designs are not just limited to lines, but often have areas which are printed. Finally, printing in color with lithography was easier and more common than with the other processes we have looked at. There were relatively few lithograph maps made in the first half of the 19th century. The earliest lithograph maps were usually issued in small quantities for specialized needs, such as for local maps of cities or regions. Lithograph maps were also made at this time for some military purposes. There were a number of lithograph maps made about 1808 during the Napoleonic Wars, and then the Bavarian Survey used lithograph maps from about 1809 to 1853. Interestingly, the survey actually hired Senfelder as its superintendent of lithographic printing in 1809. The first world atlas made using lithography was van der Meulen's Atlas Universale from 1825 to 1827. Lithography became the dominant map making process by the second half of the 19th century, used by most major map publishers. In general, there are few engraved maps after about 1850. This dominance was caused by the many advantages of lithography, which we'll look at next, and because of developments in the process which made lithography easier and more practical to use. There were new transfer techniques to get designs onto the stones which were developed in the 1820s. One of the advantages of this was that it became relatively simple to transfer the images of previously engraved maps onto lithographic stones. Then in the 1840s, color printed lithography was developed. New mechanical tools like machine ruling were developed later in the century, including photolithography. And finally, steam powered presses were invented, which allowed lithographic images to be run off quickly and in large quantities. So what are the advantages of using lithography to make maps? First, it was quick and relatively easy to produce the image on the stone. Senfelder claimed it was three times faster than engraving. Then the process was relatively inexpensive. 
the ease and quickness of producing the lithograph meant that less time and skills were needed, and also the stones could be reused. There was also no practical limit on how many impressions could be run off from a lithographic stone. And finally, it was easy to modify or correct a lithographic stone. Lithography continued to be the dominant means of map making up to the later part of the 19th century, when it was finally replaced by wax engraving and then photomechanical processes for making maps. That is a look at the major processes used to make printed maps from the 15th through the 19th century. Thank you for watching this Philadelphia Print Shop West online talk, which we hope you found informative. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or send an email to pps at pps-west.com. If you would like to see a selection of original antique maps, please visit us on our website at pps-west.com.